Welcome back to the channel family. Thanks for tuning in today. We are in Yeshiah 48, continuing our journey through this wonderful uh, book. So let's get straight to it. Hear this, ye house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of the waters of Yahudah, which swear by the name of Yahovah, and make mention of the Elohim, Yashirel. But not in truth, nor in righteousness. For they call themselves of the holy city. They stay themselves upon the Elohim Hayashirel. Yahovah of armies is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning. And they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Because I knew that thou art obstinate, and thy neck is like an iron sinew, and thy brow brass. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I showed it thee. Lest you should have said, Mine idol hath done them, and my graven image, my molten image hath commanded them. Thou hast heard, see all this, and will you not declare it? I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and you did not know them. They are created now, and not from the beginning, even before the day when you heard them not. Lest you should say, Behold, I knew them. Yea, you heard not. Yea, you knew not. Yea, from that time that thine ear was not opened, for I knew that they wouldest deal very treacherously, and was called a transgressor from the womb. For my name's sake will I defer my anger. And for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, even for my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory to another. Hearken unto me, O Yaakov, and Yashrel, my call. I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. All you assemble yourselves and hear. Which among them hath declared these things? Yahovah has loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be on the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken, yea, I have called him. I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come ye near unto me, hearken ye to this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. And now Adonai Elohim and his spirit has sent me. Thus says Yahovah, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to mine commandments. Then had thy peace, thy shalom, been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also had been as the sand, and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off, nor destroyed from before me. Go ye forth of Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans with a Voice of singing, declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. 
Say ye, Yahovah has redeemed his servant Yaakov. Yahovah has redeemed his servant Yaakov. And they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts. He caused the water to fly to the rock for them. He clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. There is no peace, says Yahovah, unto the wicked. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. <clears throat> Again, the character of the chapter uh, changes to address all creation and God's purposes in Jacob with a view to Israel, uh, which is the Christ child and, and the wife uh, out of the side of the Christ. Um, and the address is to all uh, the Jacobites, the Jacobites, the, uh, it, it goes even deeper than what we know as modern day Israel. What's, re what's really in view is mankind that is set to produce Christ and the church. That, that's what's really in view when, when you look at Yaakov. Uh, and yet Yaakov is, is a type of the first man, Adam, of uh, mankind under the ban, under the curse, but of course necessary to bring forth the Christ, uh, to bring forth the congregation, to bring forth the Lamb's wife, one man, one woman. Now, this chapter uh, very much does uh, address those human beings that came forth from the loins uh, of Jacob. Uh, now, we know uh, that Jacob and Israel are the same man. The difference is, is the presence and anointing of God. Uh, in Genesis um, 32, um, let me just get this up for you, friends. Elohim Yehovah appeared um, and wrestled in Genesis 32, yes. 3, 2, 2, 4, Jacob was left alone and there wrestled the man with him till the breaking of day. It's a great chapter, friends, and uh, uh, the pre-incarnate Christ God appeared and actually wrestled with Jacob. It's a unique story in scripture and well worth researching yourselves. Um, and, uh, you know, Jacob was, uh, was a deceiver. He was a supplanter. Uh, and the name actually means um, supplanter and heel holder. Uh, so it's someone that's holding somebody's heel. Uh, and the word supplant means to oust or to supersede, uh, to dispossess or take the place of. Um, and the origins of the English word supplant, uh, it means uh, sub, means under, um, and planter is the soul. P-L-A-N-T-A -A is the Latin for soul, planter. So subplanter means to go underneath the soul you see so a supplanter means to go underneath the soul and of course when jacob um let me see now in genesis 25 26 um we see here that when Jacob and Esau was born, Esau came, that was his brother, they were born at the same time. Um, Jacob's hand actually had a hold of the heel of his brother Esau. And so his name, Yaakov, has a dual meaning, heel holder and supplanter, um, which means underneath the soul, you see. So naturally, he was holding on to uh, his brother's soul, his brother's heel. And he was also someone that goes underneath the soul. Uh, he was a supplanter. And he grew to, to be something of a deceiver, did Yaakov. Um, 
And of course, in this chapter, what we've got on the screen right now, which is uh, Genesis 25. It's very, very interesting because uh, as they grow up, Esau was a, a very good, skillful hunter, a very rough, rough man. Uh, just Jacob was a plain man living in tents. Um, interestingly enough, Isaac, their father, Isaac was the father of Jacob and Esau. Isaac loved Esau because he loved to eat of the meat that he caught in the field. But his wife, Rebecca, um, she loved Jacob. Now, one has to be circumspect because one could say much things about all of these things. Um, but I just want to show you this, beloved here, can us that um, this, this portion of scripture here at the end of uh, Genesis 25 is very interesting because we mm -hmm. often we often think um, of Jacob Esau um, in terms of uh, Jacob pretending to be Esau to get the blessing of, of his dying father Isaac. Um, and and he, he dressed up as a hairy man because Esau was a hairy man, whereas Jacob had fair skin. Uh, and, and Jacob pretended to be Esau to get the blessing uh, of Elohim Yehovah through uh, Yitzhak, through Isaac, their father. And indeed, Jacob got the blessing uh, and Esau did not. However, before that event here in, uh, in Genesis uh, 25, we see um, that Esau actually sold his birthright. He sold his inheritance. Um, Esau comes in very faint from hunting in the field and Jacob had prepared the food um, it's quite interesting. It's a type of the flesh and flesh the desire. Um, Esau wanted the food and he said to Jacob, give me the food. I'm really ill, you know. And Jacob said to him, sell me today your birthright. So Jacob said, I'll give you the food, but I want your birthright, your inheritance. You know, so it's, it's difficult to imagine the enormity of this story. You know, I mean... You know, there wasn't as much food around. You couldn't pop into the supermarket and, and buy some food on the way home in those days. If you if you lived in a remote area, if you was hungry, you was hungry, you know. And if you was thirsty, you was thirsty. Food and drink, we, we become so accepting of its availability in the modern era. Um, but in those days, uh, it was quite a serious matter being hungry and thirsty, as was eating food that was off or drinking water that was dirty. That was a very serious matter as well. People would much more frequently eat off food and drink dirty water and die. So there was, you know, you, you didn't have any way to store um, meat to speak of, really, other than salting it and things like that. But you, very often, uh, you know, um, it was very poor quality of storage in those days, uh, meat storage, and certainly there was no way to um, to to know one hundred percent that that what he was drinking was completely pure. Um, whereas now, in in most uh, Western nations, we we have a a certain amount of guarantee. You can research the water purity of a particular nation. And it's guaranteed to be of a certain standard, uh, which is which is an amazing thing. Um, so, so we often think of uh, later on in, in Genesis where Jacob pretends to be Esau um, and gets the blessing of Isaac, uh, which blessing of God through Isaac, which was very very powerful and affected the whole future of the planet. And it's easy to forget that uh, that Esau actually sold his birthright to Jacob in order to have some food um, because he said that he was going to die and he, has, he had to have the food. So Jacob says, promise to me this day. And Esau promised to Jacob and sold his birthright to Jacob. Uh, and it says, Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils and he did eat and drink. 
and rose up and went his way. And thus Esau despised his birthright. Now, the reason why I share these things, friends, is because it's very important to get a proper overview of scripture. Um, Jacob Israel, he, he, well, he's a phenomenal type of all mankind and of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Israel. That's the thing. Yeshuel, upright God. Yesha, upright El, God. Yeshuel. Now, Yaakov is a type of the first man, the natural man under the curse of the influence of the devil, um, mankind. Yaakov. Yeshirel, you see, so, so when it says hear this or house of Yaakov, which are called by the name of Yeshirel, it speaks of God addressing mankind um, with a view to what will be through Jesus Christ, with a view to what men and women will be through mercy and grace and loving kindness and through the blood atonement, uh, the finished work of the Christ. Um, so it's, it's a very, very interesting verse, and it's quite, it's quite a deep verse. Um, so, it, so it infers that which will be in all mankind uh, through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, come forth out of the waters of Yahudah. Now, Judah, uh, the J was only around, it started being around around 16th century. There was no letter J prior to that. It, it would have been a Y. Uh, and Yahudah is how you would have pronounced it properly, Yahudah. Uh, the Yahudah or the Yahud is, uh, it, it's actually rather subtle, the difference between A and E. We say Jews, but it's actually Yahudis. Yudis, 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 Yus. You see, and so we say Jews. So, um, so the Yahudis, uh, the wars of Yahudah, so that's got the name of God in it, you see, Yahu, Yahudah, you see. The waters of Yahudah, it refers to the creatorial power and sovereignty of Elohim Yahudah, you see. Elohim Yahudah uh, is the creator and the source of all life. Uh, and when it says that these persons, as all mankind has, has come out of the waters of Yahudah, <clears throat> it refers to the father of spirits, the father of eternity, um, the source of all life. But it gets very interesting in, in the second half of the verse, which swear by the name of the Lord. So, so these, these are human beings, um, the property, precious creatures, um, but they profess and declare by the name of the Lord. And they make mention of the God of Israel. So this is not persons that... Persons that um, Mohammedans, for example, uh, they don't claim, well, I suppose some of them might, but generally and severally, it's not a term that they would use, and they certainly wouldn't name, use the name Yahuwah, Yahuwah. You know, they use the name Allah, which is also an ancient Hebrew uh, name of God, a reference to God, Allah, Allah. But they don't use the name Yahuwah, which is the personal name of God. <clears throat> So these are persons that make mention of the God of Israel. Now, since God is the God of gods and the God of Israel, you could extrapolate from that uh, that these are persons that make mention of God. But you can't separate God from Israel because the God of the Lord Jesus Christ is the God of gods, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, you see, the Father. You see, the Father of eternity. Uh, Christ uh, came into the world, became a great mountain, and fills the whole planet. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's a very interesting verse for me, is this. So they make mention of the God of Israel. They swear by the name of Yahuwah, but not in truth, nor in righteousness. Very, very interesting verse. 
So this would speak principally of Jews that do not accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And that has been the case for certainly for the vast majority of professing um, synagogue going, Torah reading, uh, Moses following, professing Yehudis. Uh, they do not accept that the Messiah has been. They're still waiting for the Messiah. You see, they're completely deluded. Their eyes are blinded. The veil is upon their lives and hearts and minds and ears. That they should not believe the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, which has gone to the nations. And as I've often said, the nations uh, are the ones that uh, caused Israel to be reestablished in the will of Elohim. And Israel was a nation born in a day in 1948. And of course, it was the Christianized nations that made that possible. So the Yahudis rejected the Lord Jesus and said, let his blood be upon us, upon our children. Within two or three decades, the Roman occupiers uh, put, the, put the Jews out of the land of, of Israel. And Israel ceased to be a nation without king, prophet or priest for 1,870 years until 1948, when the nation was born in a day. Um, <clears throat> you know, and throughout all that time, most of the Jews uh, did not accept the Lord Jesus Christ. They rejected their creator incarnate, um, but they still continued to pray and God still had his mercy, mercy and loving kindness with them uh, and was a refuge to them in the, uh, the places on the earth where they were scattered. And we know that many of them got into politics, education, the banking industry, uh, and, and lots of other things, you know, and, and God preserved them in infinite mercy. But now they are being regathered into the land of Israel. So many of them would, would, would swear by the name of Yehovah, but of course they don't pronounce the name Yehovah. Uh, they would say Adonai or Elohim. Um, but they wouldn't use the personal name. The mystery of that is, is that God promised them, I would hide my name from you. I would hide my face from you. So God hid his name from mankind, but the name of God is Yahuwah. Yahuwah, 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 Yahuwah. Yahuwah Elohim. Your Elohim is gracious, faithful, merciful, loving, kind, patient, and true. Greater than the sum of all of you, he assuredly doeth. Thou art all of great value, very precious in God's sight. For all of you uh, were in Yaakov uh, in time. Uh, and certainly all of you were in Yeshurel that day upon the cross. Everything was dealt with at Mount Colvary in Yeshurel, uh, two millennia past. Now, and here you have it, friends. So these are persons that are natural Jews. Um, <clears throat> they know that they're natural Jews. Um, children of God come forth from the Creator. They swear by the name of Yahovah. <clears throat> I suppose the believing Jews, even though they wouldn't name, use the name Yahovah, would still consider themselves to swear by the name of Yahovah, but they don't pronounce it because it's called the sacred name doctrine. <clears throat> the believing Jews don't believe in pronouncing the name Yahuwah. They think it's too holy to pronounce it. Indeed, they, they manipulate their persons around them to insist they don't pronounce the name Yahovah. You know, and it's taught as a commandment not to pronounce the name of Yahovah. Which is, which is utter folly. That's because of the delusion that's upon them and within them, you see, because of their Christ rejection. Um, they'll use words like Hashem, which means the name. Hashem or Adonai or Elohim or Eloah. Uh, yeah. So, so these are persons that swear by the Hashem of Yahovah, the name of the Lord, they make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, nor in righteousness. Uh, if you went in a man's house and disregarded his son, you wouldn't be in the house very long. And so it is when all flesh, when mortals reject the son of God, 
they themselves will be rejected by the Father. All judgment is committed to the Son. Now, moving on. They call themselves of the holy city. They stay themselves upon the God of Israel. Yahovah of armies is his name, the Lord of hosts. So they call themselves of Jerusalem. They stay themselves upon the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. So what's principally in view is Jews that reject the Lord Jesus Christ, their Messiah, their owner, their king. You see, that's what's in view. But you could you could extrapolate in a wider sense um, the doctrine of, of persons that, that, that declare to serve God, but don't really. So what does it mean to serve God in truth and righteousness? Well, it, it, it would mean that you're continuing in the scriptures. Uh, it would mean that you're reading the written word of God regular and often. Uh, it would mean that you're declaring the Lord Jesus Christ each and every day. You know, um, in prayer and whilst reading the scriptures, uh, it would mean that you would be learning as a disciple of Jesus. You would be growing in truth. I have declared the former things from the beginning and they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. I did them suddenly and they came to pass <clears throat> because I knew that you are obstinate. I'm sure my listeners can relate to that. Mortals are obstinate. And there's the verse for it. Your neck is like an iron sinew and your brow brass. Yes, that's uh, one of the etymological ironies, uh, the name for the um, tissue is sinew, sin, sinew. You know, uh, Adam uh, well was cursed uh, because he, he, he entered into allegiance with the devil and practiced wickedry. So God cursed mankind, you see. Christ became a curse upon the tree. And literally had the iron through his sinew, through his skin. And yet was entirely without sin. The mystery of the cross, friends. Christ, he who knew no sin, became sin for us that we should become the righteousness of God in him. In his own body upon the tree bear he our sins. The Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. It's very interesting because um, in Zechariah 6, which is a parallel chapter to Revelation 6, you have the two mountains of brass, which is the Father and the Son. Um, in the early chapters of Daniel, you have um, the great mountain, which is Jehovah, God the Father, and you have the stone cut out of the mountain without hands that comes into the world becomes a great mountain and fills the whole planet, that is Christ. The Lord Jesus is every man, woman and child upon this whole planet right now. So what Elohai Yahweh is saying here, well, I've already made all this known, just so you know, this is already, everything's already written down. You go to, let's have a look. You go to Revelation chapter five, <clears throat> verse one. I saw in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. <clears throat> Um, and only the Lord Jesus Christ was able to regard or to open this book. Um, it says there, the lamb standing as slain with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. 
sent forth into all the earth. So that's omniscience and omnipotence of the Christ God, uh, the man who is God, the God man. And it says here, you're worthy to take the book, to open the seals, for you were slain and has redeemed us to God by your blood out of every family, tongue, people and nation and has made us to our God kings and priests, and we shall reign upon the earth. So there is a book with seven seals written within and out and without. So that's all the knowledge and all the understanding and all the wisdom necessary uh, for complete demonic, demonical uh, deliverance, complete deliverance from uh, all the works of the devil through the finished work of Christ, the Glorious riches of the wisdom of, and knowledge of Jesus. Yeah. So that, that book there, the seven sealed book on the right hand of the Ancient of Days, you also get um, in the book of Daniel. See if we can find that for you here. Can us, there we are. So I think this is it, Daniel 7. Um, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingly dominion that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall not, be destroyed. Yes, it's a great book, the book of Daniel, friends. All right, let's come back to our chapter list. We become distracted now. So verse five, from the beginning, I've declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I showed it you. Just in case you should say, oh, well, it's our own power, men and devils. Oh, it's by our own power. We've done this. Men have done this. Oh, I've done this. You talk to men. They love to boast in what they have and what they do. Oh, I have this. And oh, I've done this. No, no, no. You've only had or done anything by gracious loving kindness and through the finished work of Christ. Mortals only breathe by the grace of Jesus Christ. Mortals only have homes, possessions, bodies, oxygen, life through the cross of Jesus Christ. Through the agonies of God's dear son. So just to be clear, men will be without excuse on that day. The most prolific and most published book on the planet is the Bible. The best known belief system on the planet is Christianity. The most used name on the planet is Jesus Christ. Everyone's birthday is dated from the birth of Jesus Christ. Right? There's no excuse. Mortals will be entirely without excuse. This is God's love letter to you. The scriptures are God's love letter. So God says, I've already told you, just so you'll know, everything's already written down, okay. And Christ comes to the Father, having accomplished eternal redemption, 
and the Father allows Christ to open the book, the seven sealed book. From the beginning, I've declared it to you. Eloha Yehovah knows the end from the beginning, friends. Before it happened, I showed you. Just so you couldn't say, oh, I've done this, so I'm just a clever bloke, you know, it's just how it is. I'm such a super chap. <laughs> it's just because I'm just so great. Mortals are made in the image of God. That's why mortals are creative um, and, and amazing. And don't misunderstand me, every human being is very, very precious because they're made in the image of God. That's why, you see. So complexities come in because of the curse and because of ancient allegiance to wicked spirits, to doomed, deluded demons. You see, the prince of the power of the air is destroyed through the agonies of Christ. The heel, the nail pierced heel of Christ, the iron pierced heel has crushed the head of the serpent. You see, the disciples of Jesus have power over all the power of the enemy. Now, see where we are. I have showed you new things from this time, even hidden things that, that you did not know. They are created now and not from the beginning even before the day when you heard them not, lest you should say, behold, I knew them. More will be revealed, revelation knowledge. On this rock, the rock of revelation knowledge, I will build my assembly, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So there you have it as well, you see. You heard not, you knew not, from that time the aurea was not opened, for I knew that you would deal very treacherously, and you was called a transgressor from the womb. See, so that's Jacob, uh, heel holder, supplanter, you see. For my name's sake, I will defer my anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. So Elohai Yahuvah uh, works on behalf of his own great name. There's only one maker. Mortals get very confused. They say, oh, well, religion. Oh, well, you know. No, no, no. There's only one maker and owner of all creation, friends, and that's Elohai Yahuvah. All things are creature possessions, doubly, as creator and as redeemer. The Christ God hath double possession of all things. Entire dominical sovereignty over all flesh right now. His Majesty Elohim Yahweh, the Eternal Father. Now, for my name's sake, I will defer my anger. For my name's sake, I will defer my anger. For my praise, I will refrain for you that I cut you not off. I chose you in the furnace of affliction and I have refined you. For my own sake, for my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be polluted? I will not give my glory to another. So that speaks of man's natural condition under the curse, you see. Um, now, of course, interestingly enough, in the Gospels, Jesus says to the disciples, I have given you the glory that I had with my father. It actually says that. But the mystery of that, you see, is Christ is God, the ancient of days, the father of eternity incarnate giving the glory to his wife, his bride, his redeemed out of his side, just as that first woman came out of a sleeping Adam, the second woman came out of Christ in the tomb. 
and, and out of the tomb with Christ and up into glory where all the saints are here in the glory, in the bliss, in eternity. Um, Christ and the bride. Christ is the triune God and the bride. That's Christianity. The bride has the same standing as Christ, the same acceptance as Christ. Christianity is literally Christ himself, your righteousness. Christ, your saviour, Christ, your king, your head, your judge, your lord and your owner. Mortals get very confused about these simple things. I am the first, I also am the last, I am he. Hearken unto me, Yaakov and Yeshurel, my call, I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. You see, so when you start to learn the scriptures, friends, it gets rid of all religiosity and all religion ideas. We say, oh, well, you know, yes. No, 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 no. You are all creature possessions, all valuable and precious. But there's only one way to God, friends, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And in truth, there's only one way to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is the will of God. John 6.44 and John 6.65, nobody can come to me unless my father draws them. It's a great verse, and as we discourse, we, we research this uh, in a pre recent previous broadcast, friends. I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. That expression appears several times in scripture. Um, it appears at least twice in the book of Revelation. Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Behold, he comes with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all families of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so am I in. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. And then in, we're in Revelation 1, Revelation 117, Revelation 117 says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first. And the last, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, am I ye? I have here the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So you see, friends, the deity of Christ is clearly established uh, throughout Scripture. Uh, and there you have it. You see, Christ says, I am deity, I am Jehovah. Jesus is Jehovah. That's the mystery of it, friends. Jesus is God. Now you have it, Revelation 117. Fear not, I am the first and the last. And if we go back to our text in 48, uh, 12, in a yes, you are. Uh, I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. My hand has laid the foundation of this planet. Uh, my right hand has spanned the skies. When I call to them, they stand up together.
I even I have spake, yes, I have called him, I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come near ye unto me, and hear ye this. I have not spake in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God Adonai Elohim and his spirit have sent me. It's a great verse, friends. A great verse. Come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spake in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. Now, what's very interesting about that, friends, is who is it talking? Who is talking? Who is the speaker? Well, it's the mystery of incarnation, friends. In Yah, Yahuwah is the rock of ages. One person, Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. Deuteronomy Ephesians 4, 6, God is one. So if you look closely at the verse there, friends, it says, come near to me and hear you this. I have not spake in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. Well, who's the speaker? If the Lord God and the Holy Spirit has sent him, who's speaking? Well, it's the mystery of things, friends. The rock of ages. In Yah, Yahovah is the rock of ages. One personage is the source of Father, Son and Holy Spirit and everything that pertains throughout the history and genealogy of this whole orb. One. Come near unto me, hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. So. It's the mystery of the Godhead, friends, the mystery of the Father and the Son, um, the Mr. He of Eternity, um, the Ancient of Days. It's the mystery of incarnation. Uh, I'd suggest going back and listening to the, the broadcast on Yeshua chapter 9, friends, uh, where you have the verses, unto us a child is born. Well, I suppose I'll put it on the screen briefly for you, friends. There we go. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, you see. Unto us, well, we'll just go with verse 6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of peace now there's absolutely no way anyone could possibly dispute that isaiah 9 6 as being a clear and explicit declaration of the absolute deity of the lord jesus christ that christ is the father of eternity From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. So it's the mystery of incarnation, you see, friends. Thus says Yahovah, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the Kedor Shechad HaYashirel. I am Yahovah, your Elohim, which teaches thee to profit, which leads thee by the way that you should go. It's a great verse. And it tells you again there, we, we would all admit that Christ Jesus is the Redeemer, 
Well, it tells you there that Yahovah is the Redeemer. Thus says Yahovah, your Redeemer. Christ is Yahovah. Uh, the, the name of Jesus Christ, well, the, the personage of Jesus Christ is Yahushua, Yahshua. Um, it literally means Jehovah is salvation or Jehovah Saviour. Uh, that's the character of Christ is, is actually God, Saviour. You know, God and Saviour. That is who Christ is. The personage is God and Saviour. You see, so it's Yahshua. It's literally Yaho or Yahoo. Uh, Yaho Shua. Shua is the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word for salvation. Shua. Um, so Yahshua. Uh, Yahshua Hamashiach. Jehovah Saviour. Um, the Messiah. Yahushua HaMashiach. Yahshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. Uh, they all pretty much mean the same things, but the name is Yahshua. Um, Yahshua HaMashiach. King of kings, Lord of lords. Uh, His majesty, the absolute supreme being, the ancient of days, the absolute sovereign of the whole universe. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leads thee by the way that you should go. All that you'd hearken to my commandments, then your shalom had been as a river. Now, in English, we have the word peace. And in, in the English, modern, corrupted English language uh, that's used across America and Britain and elsewhere, we just think, oh, a bit of peace. Oh, no. No, no, no. The word peace in the Hebrew means shalom. Shalom. It's much, much, much more than peace. It's well-being. It's deliverance. It's salvation. It's everything mankind needs. Melek Hashalom, the king of well-being. Melek Hasidkinu, the king of righteousness. Melek Hamai, the king of peoples. Melek Haretz, the king of the whole planet. Melech Hamelachim, the King of Kings, and Melech HaOlamim, the Eternal King, and the Ribbon HaOlamim, the Sovereign Eternal of the whole universe, the Ribbon HaOlamim. Now, Melech Hamai, King of Peoples. And then there you have it. Your seed also had been as the sand, and the offspring of your bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. So that's the feelings of Elohai Yehovah concerning mankind and the, the, the situation of mankind, the problems and the condition of mortals under the curse. Go forth from Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans. With a voice of singing, declare ye, tell this, utter it to the end of the earth. Say ye, Yahovah has redeemed his servant, Yaakov. It's very, very interesting. So this is the redemption of all mankind. And we have now mercy uh, and singing. Uh, the, the, the story of redemption and salvation, justification by faith, uh, the finished work of the Lord Jesus. And there you have it, friends. They thirsted not when he led them through the deserts. That speaks of mortals in their natural course of earth in time. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. Uh, that's the water that came out of the side of Christ. That's the living water. Jesus said, he said, if you believe, he that believes on me as the scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Uh, that's the life eternal. Uh, Adam, Adam was made between God and man. Um, and at Calvary in the death of Christ, that dam is broken and life eternal flows to mortals. Now, it's difficult for mortals to think of eternal life, but Christ says, I am that eternal life that was with the Father. Ye all have life, but I am that eternal life. The Ancient of Days. Elohai. 
that eternal life that was with the Father, the source of all light, love, joy, peace, liberty, and loving kindness. Every bit of joy, every bit of gladness, every bit of cheer that has ever happened upon this planet at any time is from Elohim Yabuah, is from Yahshua Hamashiach, the Ancient of Days. Mortals and devils have nothing to boast in. Just boast, Paul the Apostle said, if anyone boasts, let him boast in the Lord. And he says, I glory in the cross of Christ. Have you been thankful today, Hyrcanus, for the death of Christ? Have you had memorial? Have you brought to remembrance the sufferings of Christ for thee, the reason of thine existence, the finished work of Jesus? By his stripes you are healed, by his agonies, all his beard was ripped out, his face was beaten in. That's your redemption, that's your peace, that's your shalom, the agonies of Jesus. They thirsted not. You know, I have a, a dear brother who I've known for many years from, uh, from the Bible college days back in the 90s and uh, you know, I sometimes say to him, "You all, oh yes, I'm all, was you all right yesterday? Yes, I was all right yesterday. What about last week? Yes. What about the week? Yeah. What about the month before? What about last year? Yes, I was all right. Yes. That's all through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, I see. Yes. The existence of every human being is all in the finished work of Christ. There wouldn't have been any point in having creation without redemption. The scripture tells you the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. There's no other foundation apart from Jesus Christ. Provision of light, love, liberty and loving kindness. There is no shalom, says Yahovah to the wicked. So the devil has no shalom, you see. That's why he's angry and oppressive and seeking to distress mortals. Because he's angry. He knows he's soon going to be bound with a chain and cast into the pitch darkness of a bottomless abyss where he'll be constantly falling because he'll be chained up for a thousand earth years. Now he knows that that is imminent. So he's very angry. But there's nothing he can do about it. Because everything that is written in the scriptures comes to pass. The scripture of truth cannot, has not, and will not be broken. The infinite, immutable, immortal word of God gives you tenacity, indomitability, and willingness. The entrance of God's word giveth light. Well, here, Kinners, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, we'll be back with another recording in the near future. Um, until next time, the face of Elohim, Yahweh, give you peace and shalom and well-being, your families, your homes. Rejoice in the truth. Uh, your majestic king is very, very great and gracious and glorious and good. Elohim, Yahweh, is a great king far above all nations. King of ages, King of nations, and King of saints. Until next time, beloved Hirkaners, shalom, shalom.